widely reported that men had been celebrating the attack. After wearing my binoculars and I could see the towers from my window and this is where I, you know, I'm looking and all of a sudden down there I see this van park and I see three guys on top of the van and I could see that they were like happy, you know, they, 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 were, they didn't look shocked to me, you know, they didn't look shocked. Amazingly enough, we have found the moving company where the five Israelis worked. Was this building being used as a front for some kind of Israeli intelligence operation that possibly was doing surveillance on the Arab American community? Were there men celebrating or slapping fives or whatever? We had received an all points bulletin and uh, I just happened to see the van and, you know, hollered over to my lieutenant. You know, I think that could be the van. We checked it out and it was. You know, we were all on edge, obviously, so I really wasn't looking to make friends with these people, and neither were the officers that I were with. Once we started talking to them, you know, they were pretty much like, hey, you know, we're, you know, we're not against you, we're with you. Judaism dangerous to everybody, to every race, to every nation, to every idea, is that we smash things that aren't true. We don't believe in the boundaries of nation state. We don't believe in the ideas of these individual gods that that, you know, that protect individual groups of people. These are all artificial constructions, and Judaism really teaches us how to see that. In a sense, our detractors have us right, in that we are a corrosive force. We're breaking down the false gods of all nations and all people because they're not real, and that's very upsetting to people. There was a group of Israelis, uh, some of whom later were revealed as Mossad assets, who were arrested after cheering and high-fiving and videotaping uh, the crash of the airplanes into the World Trade Towers. Several other men were detained after a van full of explosives was stopped outside of Manhattan. Earlier we had heard that an FBI spokesperson said that there was a report on the George Washington Bridge, which is another facility which you folks are responsible for policing, uh, a report that there had been a van uh, stopped there that had explored. I'm aware that uh, some Israeli citizens have been detained. With respect to why they are being retain detained and the other aspects of, of your question, whether it's because they are in intelligence services or what they were doing, I will uh, defer to the Department of Justice and the FBI to answer that. On March 6, 2002, a draft report from the DEA said it may well be an organized intelligence gathering activity. It has been more than 16 years since a civilian working for the Navy was charged with passing secrets to Israel. Jonathan Pollard pled guilty to conspiracy to commit espionage and is serving a life sentence. At first, Israeli leaders claimed Pollard was part of a rogue operation, but later took responsibility for his work. Now Fox News has learned some U.S. investigators believe that there are Israelis again very much engaged in spying in and on the U.S. Since September 11th, more than 60 Israelis have been arrested or detained, either under the new Patriot anti-terrorism law or for immigration violations. A handful of active Israeli military were among those detained, according to investigators, who say some of the detainees also failed polygraph questions when asked about alleged surveillance activities against and in the United States. Investigators suspect that the Israelis may have gathered intelligence about the attacks in advance and not shared it. A highly placed investigator said there are, quote, tie-ins. But when asked for details, he flatly refused to describe them, saying, quote, evidence linking these Israelis to 911 is classified. I cannot tell you about evidence that has been gathered. It's classified information. Now, when the FBI investigated, uh, it quickly unraveled to be the largest foreign spy ring ever uncovered inside the United States, the largest, even the Soviet Union had not been spying on the United States as much as Israel has been doing. So they, the FBI started to round up these spies. They started to arrest them very quietly. And they were about halfway through this process of rounding up this spy ring when 9-11 happened. 
Numerous classified documents obtained by Fox News indicate that even prior to September 11th, as many as 140 other Israelis had been detained or arrested in a secretive and sprawling investigation into suspected espionage by Israelis in the United States. Investigators from numerous government agencies are part of a working group that's been compiling evidence since the mid-90s. These documents detail hundreds of incidents in cities and towns across the country that investigators say, quote, may well be an organized intelligence gathering activity. The first part of the investigation focuses on Israelis who say they are art students from the University of Jerusalem and Bazalel Academy. Documents say they, quote, targeted and penetrated military bases, the DEA, FBI, and dozens of other government facilities, and even secret offices and unlisted private homes of law enforcement and intelligence personnel. The majority of those questioned, quote, stated they served in military intelligence, electronic surveillance intercept, and or explosive ordnance units. Why would Israelis spy in and on the U.S.? A general accounting office investigation referred to Israel as Country A and said, quote, according to a U.S. intelligence agency, the government of Country A conducts the most aggressive espionage operation against the U.S. of any U.S. ally. The document concludes, quote, Israel possesses the resources and technical capability to achieve its collection objectives. What about this question of advanced knowledge of what was going to happen on 9-11? How clear are investigators that some Israeli agents may have known something? Well, it's very explosive information, obviously, and there's a great deal of evidence that they say they have collected. None of it necessarily conclusive. It's more when they put it all together. A bigger question, they say, is how could they not have known? Almost a direct quote, Brett. It is now apparent that this intelligence ring was inside the U.S., had prior knowledge of 9-11, and had a classified role in 9-11, which officials refused to discuss. It was also able to penetrate U.S. intelligence agencies and secret offices, yet all were released. The men who were detained due to the report they were taping the first plane crash and then celebrating and joking about it actually went on television and admitted it was their job to record the attack. And at that point, we were taken for another round of questioning, this time related to our allegedly being members of Mossad. The fact of the matter is, we are coming from a country that experiences terror daily. Our purpose was to document the event. How could they have known about the attack? And who sent them to document it? The evidence points to a large intelligence network inside the United States that had teams on the ground, such as the ones recording the attack, and electronic surveillance teams gathering information. Another team who was involved that day detonated explosives on the ground. We have both suspects under K. We have the suspects who driven from going to the van and then exploded. Yeah, I just want to make sure you and your guys are all right over there, K. That's all. You know, we have both field trans driven that exploded. One location. Over the years, they've been halted before the actual equipment has ever been thoroughly tested for leaks. Spinning from one thing, and that is the attack on the Twin Towers and Pentagon. The United States has wholeheartedly supported uh, essentially state-sponsored terrorism, both domestically uh, in Israel and uh, as part of Israeli's foreign policy. The American relationship with Israel is the root cause of most of the problems the United States is facing around the world today. Well, I would say this, that there's uh, one big elephant in the living room. It's uh, never asked about. People don't like to put it on any video or anything like that but it is the relationship between the United States of America and the State of Israel. It's the fly in the ointment. It's gotten, into, uh, gotten us into a peck of trouble in the Middle East.
Yeah, hi. My name's Gary Corbett. I work for Fiduciary Trust. I recently merged with uh, Franklin Templeton shortly before uh, 9-11. I was a computer operator on the night shift, Monday night into Tuesday. The previous weekend, there had been a power down. When the power was turned on, uh, <clears throat> there was a lot of uh, problems for all companies within the complex who had computer systems simply because the mainframes weren't talking to the servers, to the front end servers and vice versa. And what made the day really tragic is you had a lot of the uh, technical people, data processing types coming in early who wouldn't have been there till nine or 10 o'clock. They were uh, brought in early. And then you had the admin types coming in because you know the trial balances and the books weren't, weren't complete. The reason uh, I stopped, I saw the sign, 9-11 was an inside job. Again, uh, because of the power down, there was a complete breakdown of security that weekend. I was working on the 97th floor, and uh, supposedly, you no know, fiduciary had a vault where there was gold, some kind of agreement with J.P. Morgan or, you know, something someone of my level wouldn't understand. We had guided tours coming into uh, secured areas by mistake and nobody picking it up because there's no intrusion alarms or or anything else and uh the one thing besides the loss of co-workers that day that i'll never forget the, uh the ceo or whatever she was ann catlock just happened to be out of town and you know within moments after the collapse uh you know made the uh statement to the stockholders and uh, the other people that uh we lost a lot of people, but don't worry about them. They were only clerks, and that's the thing that will stick with me. Thank you. Any questions? Or yeah, yeah. Um, you, you mentioned the power down. Could you could you elaborate on that? And what, yeah, what, what, when was the power down? The power down started like uh, Friday night close of business, gradually into Saturday morning. It was the essential areas only. Fiduciary trust was uh, completely down. We were just there on guard duty. We we're doing nothing because uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the power was off. The power came on probably sometime, I'm guessing, about 4 o'clock uh, Sunday afternoon. And this was before the towers came this down? Was, this was before. So like I'm, what I'm saying is in regard How, how to much before? A day. Power about down two? was about two days before. Yeah. But it was it was off completely for a good 24 to 36 hours. And how how many people went into the building during that period? Oh, uh, and it's heyday. The entire uh, you know just because it's Friday, it, uh, it's hard to put an estimate. But a lot of the back office people for all companies, including uh, Fuji Bank, was like our neighbor, and uh, you know just dedicated people who would you know work in the dark. You know I don't know how many are in the business world. Were there uh, any uh, unknown handyman type people? That, that's that's hard to say because uh, you know you don't see people from local three. Every, you know you see the maintenance people that you know for your floor, the assigned floors. You don't know who's from local three. Uh, you know, could be a guy with blue eyes, or you know, he could be your stereotype. You know, mid eastern type, and you know it's New York. <laughs> uh, what's that around your neck? <clears throat> this is a. Uh, my ID card from Fiduciary Trust was, uh, wasn't even changed over to Franklin Templeton. And sick as humor may be, the men's room key for the 97th floor. So call them, you know, good luck charms. And uh, what brings you out to the, uh, to the site today? I came for the uh, memorial services I uh, have for the past few years once I got over to bitterness. And I'm also heavily involved in the uh, Stop the Mosque. As far as Stop the Mosque, I'm not really anti-Islamic per se, though. I don't agree with Sharia. My thing is, uh, this Imam, I think he has one a few blocks north. He had his original congregation. There's been a congregation uh, worshiping since 1970 on Warren Street. So they went through the Iran crisis and Desert Storm and that, there's never been an incident. I personally feel that this is in keeping with Islamic history of building a, a, a shrine or trophy near a, a victorious battleground.
Now, where were you on 9-11 uh, exactly? 9-11, I was on a break. I was theoretically to work the uh, 7 o'clock till uh, 7.30 a.m. shift, but because of the power down, I was about to meet my boss at 9 o'clock, but 9 o'clock never came. I flew the two actual aircraft uh, which were involved in 9-11, the flight number 175 and flight 93, the 757 that allegedly went down to Shanksville, and flight 175 is the aircraft that's uh, alleged to have hit the South Tower. I don't believe it's possible for, like I said, for a terrorist, a so-called terrorist, to train on a 172 then jump in a cockpit of a 757-767 class cockpit and vertical navigate the aircraft, lateral navigate the aircraft, and fly the airplane at speeds exceeding its design limit speed by well over 100 knots, make high speed to high bank turns, uh, exceeding pulling puff, probably five, six, seven Gs, uh, and the aircraft would literally fall out of the sky. I couldn't do it, and I'm absolutely positive they couldn't do it. United 93, that traffic field is 1 o'clock, 12 miles eastbound, 370. Negative contact, we're looking at United 93. Somebody call Cleveland. United 93, verify 350. United 93, verify your credible uh, 350. United 93, verify your level of 350. United 93, verify your level of 350. United 93, Cleveland. United 93, Cleveland. United 93, Cleveland Center, I got this. United 1523, did you hear your company, uh, did you hear uh, some interference on the frequency here uh, a couple minutes ago, screaming? Yes, I did, 797, and uh, I, we couldn't tell what it was either. Okay. United 93, Cleveland, if you hear the center right now. I can imagine uh, 1060, a ditto on the uh, other transmission. American 1060, you heard that also? Yes, sir, twice. Roger, we heard that also, thanks. I just wanted to confirm there wasn't some interference. Is that 956? Is that 956, though? I'm just answering your call. Uh, we did hear that uh, yelling too. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we're just trying to figure out what's going on. Hey, I'm here. I got the pizza dog. What do you mean, Sadiq? We have a ball board. Call it 10. Uh, calling Cleveland Center, you're unreadable. Say again slowly. Hunter, did you hear the transition? Or they hear probably just said he had a ball board? Uh, say again. Uh, was that United 93? Yeah, that transition said it was unreasonable. It sounded like someone said they have a bomb on board. That's what we thought. We just, uh, we, we, just, we didn't get it clear. Uh, United 93 calling. Sector 956. That aircraft we believe was transmitting at 12 o'clock, 5 miles. Turn left, heading 225. I'll get you away from him. Okay, he's climbing, so I want to keep everybody away from him. Okay, I think we got him in sight. Well, the 1989, that traffic view is at 11 o'clock and 15 miles southbound. 41 timing. Looks like he's turning east by heading 360. Uh, here's the captain. Uh, we'd like to go to the main the uh, overboard, and I'm going to the next airport, 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 and I'm going to the next that aircraft, you can't get a hold of it. Is he turned to the east now? He's just turned to the east also. United 93, you hear Cleveland Center. Okay, American 1060 and Executive 956, we just lost the target on that aircraft. Okay, 956, we had a visual on it, just stand by. Do you have a visual on it now? Uh, we did, but we lost it at the turn. So you can make a turn back to 220 heading. Let me know if you can see him. Yeah, he's still there. We got him for 956. He's still there at northwest of you, about 25 miles. Eight for a minute for 956. Executive 956, fighting 180. Okay, we're making a turn for 956. We're heading right towards us. American 1060, do you see anybody northwest of you? Can you shoot back that farther? Right, we're looking down. United 93, Cleveland, do you still hear the center? United 93, do you still hear Cleveland? United 93, United 903, do you hear Cleveland? United 93, United 93, Cleveland. United 93, United 93, here's Cleveland Center. Do you see any uh, activity Sorry? on your right side, smoke or anything like that? Negative, we're searching for the aircraft. 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 Negative, we're searching for the aircraft.
about, uh, oh, probably 2 o'clock. It appears to be just a uh, dark cloud, like a puff of black smoke. noise coming from it, but the engines were running. Um, I then saw the plane coming down at almost a 90 degree angle, maybe an 80 degree angle, and the next thing I saw was a big fireball and smoke. When it come down over top of me, I seen it go nose dive straight into the ground down here. We heard this noise in the sky, and my friend and I looked up and uh, said, what's that? And uh, just going over, the, basically over our uh, horizon of the hill, was this plane. It was completely upside down, is what it was. Uh, the tail fin was down, and it was going in at a sharp ascent, probably more than a 45-degree angle, closer to a 90-degree angle. It definitely did not look like a commercial plane. I didn't see any windows on the side. Mark, if what you say is true, those could be cargo planes or something like that. You said you didn't see any windows in the side? I didn't see any windows in the side. I saw the plane flying low. I was probably like a block away from the subway in Brooklyn, and that plane came down very low. I mean, it was like a, a cruise missile with wings. went right there and slammed right into the Pentagon. Huge explosion. A uh, great ball. I've done as I've slowed it down as much as I can. Um, please feel free to stop this and read what I have actually written. Um, it makes quite clear sense, and you'll see. So here it is now. Um, you'll see the dot appear just there, um, just under the smoke cloud. It's not debris, because remember, the South Tower is on the other side of the building. That is a laser guidance dot. 
It's used in missiles in the war to um, target a weapon or something that they're trying to hit and they utilise it to actually make the impact. And just before, the other weapon that everybody has suspected, um, I believe, is actually a giant laser. You can even see the beam just penetrating from the, the actual plane just before it hits. That is a grey plane. That is a military plane. Um, I've got to admit, I first thought the dot was a UFO. Um, I thought it was a spear UFO because I thought I saw it moving across the um, the field. Um, where is it? I'll show you in a sec. Um, all I've done, by the way, is slowed this down. And it was only after I saw it hit the second building. So I saw a bit of debris moving, and that's why I thought it was the actual... Um, I thought it was a UFO. But... Um, that dot would appear on that cloud just as well, just the same. Uh, the guy has actually forgotten to turn off his laser guidance system and it just disappears every now and then because it basically is, there's nothing for it to, to hit. Um, but it'll start to appear in a second. It follows the cloud um, across and then it, you can't see it, but in about, just about now it starts to appear on the top left hand corner of the building that is, um, oh no sorry, yeah, you've got to forgive me, this has slowed down dramatically. Uh, you can still see it hitting the World Trade Center just there, here it is, it's now starting to come onto the other building, there it is, there is the laser guidance dot and you can clearly see he's just pulling it down and he's just moving it slowly across, it, it, it went invisible because it went into something that was out of sight by a window um, and you'll see it clearly go down the side of the building in a sec um, this is just basically um, me sorry about the uh, thing in the middle of the narration it's just basically I want you to actually notice uh, what's there um, I believe that the murderers of the 9-11 I actually watched this event unfold and was as shocked as every American I'm not American, but there's the white dot, and you watch this white guidance dot slowly move across the building. It's a lot faster in uh, real time, but um, you can see it just black out every now and then. That's because it's going into a window crevice as it's going along the building. That is what proves this is a laser guidance dot. Um, it's amazing, and there it is again. It's popped out because it's hit the side of the building. Um, it's hit on an angle and then it will disappear in a second as it goes into another window that's re recessed in. That's why you can't see it from this angle. I believe that there's, I'm trying to look for footage of that building um, from another angle. And I'm going, if I find it, I'm going to slow it down. Um, so basically, there is your evidence, folks, that this was an inside job. This sitting outside uh, the, the, the classroom waiting to go in and I saw an airplane hit the tower of, an, of a TV, you know, the TV was obviously on and I, I used to fly myself and I said, well, there's one terrible pilot. And uh, I said, it must have been a, a horrible accident. But I was whisked off there and didn't have much time to think about it. Now, wait a minute. George Bush was told about the second plane while he was inside the classroom. So you just heard him describe seeing the first plane crash on television that day. But that's impossible. No one saw the first plane crash on TV on September the 11th because the videotape of it didn't surface until the next day. So how could George Bush have seen what he said he saw?
try to get a better vantage point and see what we can see on the ground. It's a little difficult from the air because the buildings kind of shadow the streets, but no doubt a lot of activity on the ground right now. And um, in terms of the firefighting capabilities, when you get up to this high level, uh, I assume the firefighters have got to get up there and, uh, you know, fight it from inside. Oh, uh, if you're taking a look now, you can wow. see that we've just had another explosion, and that is considerably lower. And is that in the other building? Is that, that what I'm witnessing? That, that apparently does look like it is in the other building.